Greetings, my Rotary family. I am joined today by the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, the Right Honorable Patricia Scotland KC. A delight to be able to have a conversation with you today. And I thought we would jump in first with you sharing a little bit about what exactly is this role? I think a lot of people are probably curious as to what it entails. Well, as you may know, the Commonwealth is made up of 56 countries. That's about 2.6 billion people. 60% of whom are under the age of 30. So we're talking about one third of the world. And the Commonwealth leaders choose the Secretary General of the Commonwealth to run the Secretariat, which is the organization which provides the administrative support for what the leaders decide. If you think about who we are, those 56 countries come from the four corners of the world. We have some of the biggest and most dynamic and richest countries, and some of the smallest, most vulnerable, and fragile countries. We come from five different regions. We encompass six different oceans. We have 33 small member states. We have 25 of them as island states, but 15 of them are the least developed countries in the world. We have landlocked states, island states. We have states who um, have, five of our states have other monarchies. 36 of our states are republics. And so this mixture, this diversity, this eclectic combination of peoples and religions and cultures, it's probably the most diverse set of countries in the world, but we are the greatest number of democracies in the world because every member state is a democracy. Well, and we, as an organization, have more than 200 countries in geographical mm -hmm. areas. So as our audience is listening to this, certainly there's an opportunity for dialogue within other, other potential countries uh, to be part of it. You have, and, and I have, this opportunity to be able to connect with people from our member countries and beyond. And one of the things that, that strikes me, and it's such a simplistic statement, we all want the same things. We do. We all want to be loved. We, we want our communities to thrive and survive. Be healthy. To be we healthy. We want people to be able to go to school. We exactly. want them to have the hospital and medical care. They, we want them to have the right bridges, the right roads, the right infrastructure. We want them to thrive. Exactly. And we want our world still to be here in the next millennium. And now the question is, how do we catch up? What do we do? And it's clear that every single one of us is under huge stress. So the only way we're going to get out of that is by working together in partnership. It has to take all of us. We created a fulcrum of information where we shared everything that worked, but we also shared everything that did not or had not worked. And that sharing of knowledge and expertise has exponentially improved our ability to get it right. But it's predicated on trust, on family, and also reaching out to all our accredited organizations, all of the accredited organizations, your volunteers, your young volunteers, your older volunteers, mm -hmm. because somehow we try to keep things afloat. You know, the things that you're doing on polio, that we're supporting, the things we wanted on prenatal uh, where well, all of that work, somehow, we had to keep on track. And I think everybody should be celebrated for surviving, mm -hmm. for being still willing under all that pressure and stress to help. And I believe that we will achieve to get back on track, but not if we try to do it on our own. Governments can't do it on its own. Business can't do it on its own, civil society can't do it it's on their own, food foundations, none of us. It needs all of us working together. You brought up polio earlier, our number one organizational mm. corporate priority. Much of that has been focused on gender strategy yep. and certainly in our remaining two endemic countries of yep. Pakistan, Afghanistan. I spent 11 days in Pakistan in August. The women who are 
immunizing, building trust, door-to-door, mum-to-mum is a massive part of the strategy. Absolutely. What is the Commonwealth doing for gender equality, gender equity? What, What space exists here and what are some of the goals? Now, it's about inclusivity, I think, that really does it. And the Commonwealth has focused on women for virtually all of its history. You know that Her Majesty the Queen, Mm -hmm. our head, Mm -hmm. was a young woman when she started in 1953. She said the Commonwealth is a totally new conception, built up of the finest qualities of man, Um, you know, equality, democracy, unity. And she said it was a unique partnership between countries and races. Mm -hmm. So no one was talking, if you think about it, in 1953, which other leader was talking about uh, equality between countries and races? But there was the young queen, Mm -hmm. the young leader, and people forget that she was a young woman leader at a time when she was surrounded by male leaders. So we have been mainstreaming women's issues and women's leadership right the way through. But we're talking about how do you make sure that women are included in every level of delivery and policy development Mm -hmm. and implementation? And you've just described why the polio vaccination process has been successful. Mm -hmm. It is this Mm mum-to-mum. Because if you think about who looks after the family, who still, no matter if they work, who still arranges for everyone to go to their appointments in Elfram's Hill, they did a a fantastic analysis of um, decision making and the power dynamics. Final question. What is your greatest hope for our world um, in in the immediate months and weeks and years to come? I really want us to tackle this issue of climate change. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, people talk about a whole set of issues, but if we have no world, there'll be nothing to argue about. Mm -hmm. And as I watch uh, the world make commitments, I really would like them to honor those commitments. Way back in 2009, the world committed to have $100 billion for adaptation and mitigation as there was an understanding that the disproportional effect of climate change was hitting the global south, who had done virtually nothing Nothing. to contribute to it. And yet they were the ones who were fighting the hardest to do it. So what I would really love to see is that all of our countries, not just talking, but walking that talk. Well, as a a fellow Commonwealth member, I couldn't agree with you more. And I thank you profoundly for taking time to be able to speak with our Rotary family, to share your thoughts, your wisdom, and the experience that you bring uh, to this. Uh, I commend you for the incredible role that you um, have led as Secretary General of the Commonwealth of Nations and just incredible gratitude for the time you've spent with us today. Well, thank you, but I want to thank you too because you are the first woman to leave this extraordinary organization. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rotarians come together of every color, every creed, every religion, and they do so voluntarily because they want to make the world a better place. And they give so generously of their time, their money, their energy. And I know what it has taken to become uh, their leader. So thank you. Thank you.